Hi everyone, so today I have a really cool question for you and today we're going to learn how we can deal with inverse trigonometric summations, right? We're going to see how the method of telescoping works when we have inverse trigonometric series. Now you might have studied telescoping for a standard series, algebraic series, but what makes inverse trigonometric series more interesting and a lot more fun is that you have to use some identities of trigonometry or inverse trigonometry in order to usually deal with this, right? So let's see how we can proceed with this question. And uh, this is a question from the HMMT, Harvard MIT Math Tournament, and really things like inverse trigonometry. This is more often seen in American exams, AMC, AIM, a lot of these college contests. But in India as well, we have seen them come in quite a few exams, you know, such as the pre-RMO, and obviously they're an integral part of the ISS, CMS syllabus as well. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple of inverse trigonometric identities that you should know in order to tackle this question. How we can evaluate an inverse trigonometric sum, essentially how this concept of telescoping works for inverse trigonometric series. Then we have some book sessions of senior math Olympiads and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we need to find the summation, right? We have this sigma cotangent inverse of 1 plus n plus n squared. Very fascinating. But before we really jump into this, I want you to know a couple of interesting properties about inverse trigonometric functions. The first one is that cotangent inverse of x is nothing but tangent inverse of 1 by x and there exists a really cool proof for this so let cotangent inverse x be equal to alpha that means that cotangent alpha is equal to x right but then what is tangent of alpha well it would simply be 1 by x right because cotangent tangent the product is 1 right so if cotangent alpha is x tangent alpha will be 1 by x but then what will be alpha alpha will be tangent inverse 1 by x right but this alpha, this alpha was equal to cotangent inverse x. And here we are seeing that it's equal to tangent inverse 1 by x. So therefore, I can conclude that cotangent inverse x is equal to tangent inverse 1 by x. And that is the property that I had mentioned over here. Property number one. Right. And the second thing that you should probably be knowing about is this identity. That's tangent inverse x minus tangent inverse y. And this is indeed equal to tangent inverse x minus y divided by 1 plus xy. Now, if you remember, that there is a pretty cool proof for this as well. So, we're going to prove this. Now, if you remember the difference of tan alpha and tan beta, so tan alpha minus beta. And right? if you remember the formula for this, in trigonometry, it was essentially tan alpha minus tan beta divided by 1 plus tan alpha tan beta, right? Pretty standard formula. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use certain notation, right? I'm just going to maybe plug in tan alpha as x. So basically alpha becomes tan inverse x, right? From this definition. Then I'm going to plug in tan beta as y. So beta is effectively nothing but tangent inverse of y, right? So we get tan alpha minus beta is equal to tan alpha, which is x minus tan beta, which is y divided by 1 plus xy right or if i take tangent inverse on both sides i'll get alpha minus beta is tangent inverse x minus y divided by one plus xy okay that is excellent but what was this alpha and what was this beta alpha was tangent inverse x and beta was tangent inverse y so here if i just plug that in i'll get tangent inverse x minus tangent inverse y is equal to tangent inverse x minus y divided by 1 plus xy which is what i had written up top this is the property and hence we have proven this right so these are a couple of results that you should know in order to solve this question but now let's just jump onto the question and in the question they've given us summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity of cotangent inverse right n square plus n plus 1 this is what they've given to us i'm just going to first convert this into tangent inverse Right, so from property number one that we just studied, I can write this as tangent inverse one by one plus n plus n squared. So now we effectively have to figure out a way to telescope this sum. 
right now if you actually notice tangent inverse x minus tangent inverse y so whenever we want to telescope something we have to write it as a difference of two quantities right and here we have a single quantity so effectively the single quantity tangent inverse 1 by 1 plus n plus n square this is acting as the right hand side so if we are able to somehow write it as a difference of arc tangents we can figure out a way in which we can kind of telescope this right so we need to write it in a difference of uh, arc tangents basically and how can we do that we can do that by the simple manipulation or the simple observation that the denominator can be written as 1 plus n times n plus 1 right and the numerator can indeed be written as n plus 1 minus 1 minus n actually right and the denominator we have 1 plus n times n plus 1 like this now if i just use x as n plus 1 and y as n do you actually notice something this is effectively summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity of tan inverse of x minus y divided by 1 plus xy and if I just plug in x equal to n plus 1 and y is equal to n, I get something of this form, right? But what is this equal to? This is equal to tangent inverse x minus tangent inverse y. Or in our case, this would be equal to the summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity of tangent inverse x, which is n plus 1, minus tangent inverse y, which is simply n. Right? So this is essentially the sum that we need to telescope, right? Tangent inverse n minus 1 minus tan inverse n. As simple as that. And this is pretty standard to deal with so what i can do is i can take the limit as capital n tends to infinity and i can write this as summation n is equal to zero to n tangent inverse n plus one minus tangent inverse n and i can write it just like this so instead of having an infinity i can just take it that it's going up to n right and once you've come to here you can really easily see that this sum actually telescopes really nicely because um, if you just write it out so for example we have sum from n is equal to 0 to n of tangent inverse n plus 1 how would this look like this would be tangent inverse 1 plus tangent inverse 2 plus tangent inverse 3 and it would go all the way up to tangent inverse n plus 1 similarly similarly what would this summation from n is equal to 0 to n of tangent inverse n look like it would be tangent inverse 0 but arctan 0 is really 0 so i can just ignore that so this will again be tangent inverse 1 plus tangent inverse 2 and this would go all the way up till tangent inverse n and once i subtract both of these quantities a lot of things will get cancelled right because effectively you have a subtraction sign over here we need to subtract these two quantities so if you see this and this right this and this everything gets cancelled up to tangent inverse n and all we are really left with is the limit as this capital n tends to infinity of this last term over here which is tangent inverse of n plus 1 and it's very easy to see that this is nothing but pi over 2 and the reason is that this is effectively tangent inverse infinity which is indeed tending to pi over 2 right or in other words i can just say that tangent of pi over 2 is indeed tending over to infinity so tangent inverse infinity would be pi over 2 right so what's our answer our answer is pi over 2 so the summation right our original goal what we had to achieve was the summation and that is indeed without a doubt equal to pi over 2 so quite a fascinating question like i said and uh, in this we had to apply a couple of trigonometric or inverse trigonometric identities which you do not usually need to apply in normal summations right in normal telescopings for uh, algebraic expressions but this is what makes it more interesting and this is what makes it more fascinating at least for me so hope you learned something from that and now you can practice maybe certain questions on you know summations of inverse trigonometric functions how you can telescope them right okay so moving on to certain book sessions for senior math olympiads i am a compendium polynomials by barbeo elementary number three by sapinski graph theory by harari combinatrix by bruvaldi secrets and inequalities and functional equations how to solve them by christopher g small okay so at the end we have a simple but challenging problem and this is again you need to kind of telescope this uh, this series you need to find out the value of this and try this out this is again an inverse trigonometric summation so you might have to use certain properties of inverse trigonometric functions but maybe give this a go right try this out definitely and if you're able to do it let me know until then i'll see you in the next video thank you very much and bye bye chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized 
with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.